Okay, welcome to the very latest production line developer blog. I am the programmer and designer Cliff and uh, this is the car factory strategy game uh, production line. There's a shock, I bet you were expecting me to talk about a completely different game. Um, but no, no, I'm not. So uh, we recently did uh, an update yesterday to version 1.75, which was an unusually big update for this sort of point in the game. Um, because we had 25 things in it that we changed. I'm just going to point out some of the uh, the kind of big ones, the more um, like interesting and obvious ones. Uh, so, oh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few actually. Um, there are a lot of bug fixes, bug fixes, bug fixes. Um, one of the big things is this. If you, if you want to adjust the price, you can adjust the price using these buttons here. Bonk bonk like that that was 24 wasn't it um you, you can always do that with the mouse wheel anyway um but uh but some people prefer buttons um obviously you may have a mouse without a wheel on it or uh, you may have a laptop so that's a thing um but there's another thing that we added here i want to kind of do this in order um we show the market value here um i should explain that a little bit because the market value of this car is right now is $32,000. So that is the market value of the base car and all the features that we've added. Um, and I'm selling it for $24,000. So arguably I should be, you know, I, I, sh I should be selling them as fast as I can make them. Uh, and I am, you'll notice that there, there's none in stock. I could actually raise the price of, of, of that, but then it would become a mid-range car and different people would be in that market. Um, if we pick one that's sort of later in the, Thing. so there we go so that is real the market value of that is 70,000 and we're actually selling it for 75,000 and it is estimated based on the current production rate that we make a 61% profit on that car um, so really what's happening is we're not making we're not making enough of these cars right um, because we are selling them as fast as we're making them um, and as a result, we're kind of getting away with the fact that they're sort of overpriced. Okay, so the idea is, say you only, say, um, you know, a car is really worth, uh, let's take an example that I would know about, um, which would be like, say a Tesla Roadster, the new stupidly fast car. Um, the market value of that car might only be like, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollars or something like that um, but if they only make like 50 a year they can charge double or treble that because there's more people that want to buy it so they know they're paying over the odds you know it's like anything that is kind of like limited edition or you have to queue up for if the market value um, is in the opposite direction um, and you're producing too many of these cars um, then basically you're going to have to charge less than the market value. In other words, people are going to have to go to buy that car and think, well, I wouldn't have bought that um, because it has loads of stuff I don't need, but it's such a bargain um, that it's effectively on sale. So the market value is kind of, it's, it's a price of interest, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the price you should set. Um, that depends on how well matched your production is to the number of customers so at the start of the game your production is pretty um, slow right because you just don't have the throughput you don't have the specialization so at the start of the game what you should be doing is pricing your cars way over market value uh, because there's a limited number of them so there is uh, for some reason there are people who are always going to buy your model of your make of car um, and if you increase the price they're not that price sensitive maybe every 10th person that shows up is going to buy one of your cars um, the other nine go well that's way above market value but it doesn't matter because you're not making enough cars for all 10. it's it's slightly kind of um it's kind of a complicated thing to explain and it's funny because like in the industry that i'm in i, I run a business and i spend a lot of time thinking about, about pricing um, but because with a video game we always have infinite supply um, we don't we don't ever have to think about this kind of stuff uh, but in the real business it, when it comes down to cars and stuff like that um, you really do so for example 
again, I'm going to talk about Tesla because it's the only car company that I, I really follow really closely. Um, they cut a lot of prices recently on various cars and people were confused as to why they cut those prices um, because the demand is currently higher than, than the supply. So, for example, if they were to put up the price of their Model 3 at the moment, they would probably sell um, exactly the same number because they simply cannot produce them fast enough. And you can argue whether or not that's the case. Um, but it's something that you need to take account of in this game because your, uh, your production is not infinite. So when you scale up massively, um, if you find that you are selling cars below market value, in other words, you're packing them full of features because you, like, you've optimized and upgraded everything um, and you're selling them. See, I really need to put up my prices. I've got nothing in the showroom. That's all, is that defects? Uninstalled, oh, okay. Um, uh, yeah, towards the end of the game, when you're producing an enormous number of cars, um, what you need to do is you need to use marketing. You need to come in here and use marketing and boost the number of people who actually know about your company and are coming through the showroom. Um, if you get those out of alignment, you're producing more than there are customers or producing way under the, uh, the amount that there are customers, um, then you're going to have to compensate with the price either up or down. Um, I probably need better advice in the game to talk about that. But anyway, that, so that is a new thing. We actually display that there. You could always have worked it out by going through and adding up all the values, these market values in here. Um, but obviously, actually I don't think we listed the, the base value, so maybe not. Um, but it, it's, we decided to put it in there anyway. Um, blah, 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 blah. One of the things we did um, to do with balance was that when defects happen in the game, and I, th am I, the yeah, I am, like these cars have defects, yeah. At the start of the game, there are no defects on cars. Every car you produce is perfect. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna accept a loan. Wow, I was not paying attention to that, was I? Oh dear. Um, yeah, so, so um, when you first start the game, to keep it fairly simple and to keep it kind of like uh, playable, we don't have defects on cars and then it gets to a certain point and defects on cars appear. And it can really throw people and it was kind of a balance issue. So what we did is we, we now fade this in over I think 10 hours or something. Um, yeah, so over a period of 10 hours, more and more cars um, will get defects up until it's the normal rate at which cars get defects. So you have time to research um, uh, all the various stuff um, in, in order to prevent that happening. So you then research um, the rework facility. We've got one around here somewhere, haven't I? Got, oh, I've got quite a few, actually. Um, yeah, so there's a rework um, to fix those defects. Um, because some players will be caught out. So I think that's a, an important balance change. Um, we've stuck in a new button here, reset advice, so that if um, some of the little pop-ups um, giving you advice on um, like pricing and stuff like that, if you'd ever said, no, I don't want this advice, and then you regret that, uh, you can reset them. Um, there's a few things that, if I link a supply stockpile to a particular thing, for example, this is fit steering column, I think. Um, and it comes up there saying this is linked to fit steering column. It now shows it in that update. I may have mentioned that before. Uh, a few other gooey things. Um, blah, 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 blah. Pop up windows and task picker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, market value. Oh, there was a bug. <laughs> um, there was a bug that if I had a car in the showroom, please, um, that you couldn't scroll this thing using the mouse wheel was fixed. Um, we fixed a few things for really big monitors. Something else that we did is here. You see this new stuff. This will now eventually fade out. Okay, if I if I let the game just just like play like this, um, this used to be annoying. In the, it basically says you've just researched the technology here. Here's where it is because you see the research screen. You come back and you think, well, where do I find that new thing? Uh, in order to put one down in the game. Uh, so it was a little bit confusing. Um, the trouble is, hours later, if you hadn't placed one, it would still say new, and it kind of wasn't you. It was kind of nonsense, um, and you would end up with it everywhere. There you go, they've gone now. Um, I think that's nicer. 
um, rather than cluttering that up. Uh, and we did some uh, renaming of stuff, which is a little bit more involved than you think, because you have to rename it in English, French, German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, Czech, Slovenian, and Swedish. Um, so for example, we used to say insufficient resources, and we now say waiting for resources, um, which kind of makes more sense. Uh, so it's not really an error, it's not really a bug, it's just, you know, we know what resources we want and they are on the way, um, rather than the fact that we're not connected to resources. Uh, I think that makes, makes more sense. Um, we, we named something else. Also, yeah, wrong body style. Um, we changed that. I really need to put up some prices big time, don't I? What do um, uh, sales per hour, blah, blah, blah. That price can definitely go up. That can probably go up a lot, actually. I'm just looking here at this. Oh, it's a budget, budget cars are difficult to make a profit on, as we all know. Uh, I'm going to put that up as well. Uh, I'm not selling a lot of. I'm going to put that up. Um, and that. Anything that's on budget, actually, to be honest. Um, I prefer to use the, the, the wheel. Um, oh, so if we've got a car in here, let's see if this shows up. Customer view count, they haven't been viewed yet. I think I've got a little bug in my setup somewhere here on this game. Um, is it going to show up? Come on. Looking for different body style. If you can see that tool tip. Now it says looking for different body style. Um, it used to say wrong body style, which implies that you've made a mistake. But what it really means is a customer looked at this, but to be honest, they wanted a compact car, so they didn't. Um, so that makes a bit more sense. Um, what else have we got? We had a problem with the letter X when typing it in your company name, believe it or not. Uh, that's fixed. Something we did in the map editor, I will talk about, and there's uh, three other things. That was just a bug, that was just a bug, that was just a bug. Um, if you go here, I can just talk about other stuff as well. If you go here um, and you wanted to add uh, a new entry to this list of uh, car production, this is now alphabetically sorted. It never used to be. You think it doesn't matter, but when you've got 50 car designs, it matters. Um, so we change that. Um, yeah, if I... Can I show it from here? No, I can't. If I quit to main menu, and hopefully everything will be all right. Um, if we go in here and go to edit something, um, you can place these red and green arrows for imports and exports. And I think some people were trying to place them outside and it was a little bit confusing. So now if you go to import slots, it highlights where they can, where they can go. Um, the same with exports. Um, because a few people have experienced problems here. Um, you will notice that you can't place them on the last row outside the map. This is just stupidity on my part and it will get fixed at some point. So let me load in, um, I think that was a, is that too much battery pack or was it? Uh, I'm gonna load in a bit of an old one uh, while I talk about other stuff. So, what next, right? What am I working on next? Um, what changes are going to come to the game next? Um, as the game gets older and bigger and more complicated and we have more players, it probably seems like progress slows down in terms of development of features and stuff like that. And to head off any like, ah, devs are lazy um, kind of stuff. Um, the thing is, when you have more players, the slightest small bug is experienced by a lot more people. So, uh, for example, if you have something that only affects one in a thousand players, like some hardware incompatibility or something, um, rather than it happening to one person uh, and, and they're going kind of like, oh, you know, it must be my PC or maybe it's the game or I don't know, and then they just refund it. Um, you know, if you sell more, you may have 50 people experience that thing, and then four or five of them will complain about it, and um, that, then I'll know about it, um, and we'll look into it, and um, it's more likely to be fixed. So a lot of tiny little edge cases suddenly become something that I have to fix. And also because the game is really complicated, any change to it has vastly more potential to screw other stuff up. Um, 
it just gets more and more interrelated and complicated. So this is why the latest update has 25 entries in it and a lot of them are tiny. So um, so for example, there was this problem um, when you name your company that, um, that when you type here, um, the letter X was too wide and like I never noticed, it's just a tiny little graphical font error that was easily fixed. Um, but the thing is you need a certain um, scale of player base and people, uh, you know, typing before someone decides to do that. Um, obviously no one had had an X in their company name before or the four or five people who had done it hadn't reported it. Um, so you build up all of this stuff and I'm working on it at the same rate I've always worked on the game. Um, it's just that there's a lot of stuff like that that um, Look at these bottlenecks, outrageous, um, that, that has to be done. Something that I want to get done and I want to start on, and it is in my schedule, which I don't make public. I know some people have like public Trello boards and stuff like that. I don't think it's helpful because if I did that, if you saw my public Trello thing, I don't use Trello anyway, um, not for this game. Uh, it would be slightly confusing and annoying because stuff would keep getting moved by me. And the thing is, when it's private, if I put up a thing like I'm going to fix this thing on a Thursday and then um, a few people report something else and I drag that Thursday thing to next Tuesday, I don't want to justify it to anyone. It's like, you know, better to suddenly rock up and go, hey, I've fixed this thing rather than I will fix it on Thursday. So what I have down is from Monday to Thursday this week, because I'm not here Friday, um, I'm going to do some sort of breakdown chart for component and raw material costs. So what I mean is here, um, when we look at this, let's look at it at 24 hours, which is a lot more kind of um, relevant, right? longer period. Um, I can look at where all the money goes, right? And it goes on component purchase, raw materials, capital investment, and the other stuff. Actually, it's not sorted. This should be sorted, shouldn't it? Should it? It can't be sorted because we've got three different amounts. But here, should it be sorted? I think it should, that's awful. Um, people have pointed out to me, and they're absolutely right, actually, the uh, pie charts are awful. Um, it, is, it depends what the numbers are, right? Pie charts are very good at looking at this and going, whoa, it's all component purchase, okay? But pie charts are very bad at comparing like that with that. Is that 20% more? Is that 40% is that more? It's very hard to tell. When you've got a few big chunks and loads of trivia, um, it's very good for showing that. So we know it's basically raw materials, component purchase, rent, wages, and a few other things. Um, so I should maybe improve that. I should sort that. Or should I? Because this is the order of it, right? That's, that's the order. So does that make more sense? User interface design is really complicated um, because here I'm going raw materials, capital investment, component purchase, and it's always in the same order, right? So you can do that. That's why I'm doing it. Maybe I should leave it like that. Maybe I should have a toggle to show bar chart versus pie chart, but isn't that just a cop out leaving it up to the player to decide? Anyway, the big problem is raw materials costing a lot. That's helpful. Well, it sort of is to know that raw materials cost a lot, but which ones? Now, the holy grail is to have raw materials cost everything and everything else to be pretty much minuscule by comparison. Because what that means is you are doing everything in-house, you're massively vertically integrated, you're capturing all of the profit in the, in the production chain. Um, so let's ignore that for a minute. But component purchase, what I want to do is I want to shove some of these into there. I want to start importing more raw materials and producing more components in-house. That is the kind of paradigm of the game. You can discuss whether or not that's real um, in the real world or not. Um, but, but which ones? Which ones? I do not know. The only way I can have any insight is that if I go here to components, I can see what's produced. Um, so look, a lot of sensors. What's consumed? Okay. How much do I have in the stockpile? Okay. But the difference between these, you'd have to do maths and work it out. So, um, wow, we import a lot of servos, I can see. And I can see how much they cost. But really, I need to know um, the total amount of money I'm spending on servos, right? Um, and I don't have that. Some people say this data should be here, okay? I just don't know, because this is the efficiency 
of production and consumption of stuff. This is the efficiency. This is um, production data, right? Whereas here, this is money, 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 money. This tells you the prices of stuff. Um, again, maybe I, I, I should, I, I could put it everywhere, right? Sort by price. Um, so cheapest thing. This is from mods. Ignore this. Um, so large battery pack. There's a shock. Is is one that is the most expensive thing. Um, this is all about money, right? And we want to know where the expenses go. So I think either I subdivide the, all these components into slightly different shades of red, and, and you'd be able to mouse over them, or maybe you click plus on this, and then it changes into blah 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 blah, or maybe some other. I I can't decide. The best way to break this down, I cannot decide. Um, Actually, is that oh, that's because that's K, isn't it? I wonder if I should do that because I don't think that's very helpful. Anyway, um, you may think this is easy, and I know like uh, people who are new to programming or don't know anything about games or anything will go, "Well, isn't there just a Unity Asset Store widget you, th that does that?" No. Firstly, there isn't. Secondly, it's not done in Unity, and thirdly, um, I like these things to be efficient and crafted specifically for the game so that they work perfectly for, for this. Um, so I want to do the right thing. So I'd have to code it from scratch. I need to design it from scratch. I need to work out the best way of presenting this information. And um, I have set aside four days, which doesn't sound that long, but it's, it is a long time for me. I get a lot done in four days. That's what I'm going to work on between now and the next video. So in the next video, I'll be showing you this and going, what do you think of this? And people will be saying, that sucks, Clev. And um, I'll be sobbing because it took me four days to do it. We'll find out. <laughs> Anyway, this is production line. Um, a lot of chit chat about little things. Um, what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and put together some videos that are a lot that have got nothing to do with the work that's been done on the game and the updates to the game. Um, what it's going to be is going to be about factory design and layout um, within the game, do's and don'ts from the point of view um, of the programmer. Um, because I think that's interesting. It's interesting to know like the, the thoughts of the the designer of a game, um, you know, when you're stuck in a particular part of a game or annoyed with a certain part of it, if you hear the designer talking about it, it might kind of like make a bit more sense. I was going to say, why aren't these animating? And then they suddenly started animating. It's because they weren't working. See these little lights on these computers here? Have you, no have you noticed? These, they actually animate. It was a big deal at the time. I'm going to leave you with this amazing animation of computer servos. Uh, computer racks and I will say thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Cheers.